with your voice and my voice and whatever I do on the screen, it will be screen captured. And I will send this lesson to you after the session is over. You can practice. If you Sorry, what, what did you say? I will be recording this lesson as a video. Ah, you will start recording now? Yeah. And oh, okay. We, your voice and my voice will also be included in the recording. When you speak, your voice, when I uh -huh. speak, my voice, all will be included in the recording. Okay. Okay. All and right. Then after the, so I will mute. after the class is so finished, I, will... I send you the video. You will send me the recording? Yes. So, okay, did you, start you don't recording need now? my help because whenever you may forget some steps. Exactly. Yeah. So when you see the video, it will be like you are seeing the class again. Sure, sure. But did you start recording now? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm recording. Can you see? Here. Or it's showing only the illustrator screen, I believe. Yeah. Ah, okay. So. Okay. So um, I'm going to just put myself on mute because I'm at the office just to avoid background noise. Okay. Every time okay, I okay, because ask now question. My, I don't have a camera, so in this machine, so no need, no, no problem. I'm just saying I will yeah. put myself on mute, right. uh, just to avoid background right. noise. Right. And every time I have a question, I will unmute. Okay. Yeah, you can unmute and you can talk. Exactly. Sure. All right. Yeah, fine. Okay. So this particular software is made like is it works with vector graphics. What is vector graphics? Because each and every drawing you create or an image, an illustration, it's all made of dots, okay? It's not made of pixels. In Photoshop, you have all the images, uh, the text, the art you create, everything will be made of pixels. So there you have image resolution restrictions. That means, like, uh, you cannot go beyond 100% view. You have to see everything only in 100% of the resolution of the image. You cannot go beyond that. And for printing, you have to have 300 pixels per inch resolution for the size. And for website, you have to have 72 pixels per inch, uh, per square inch. Okay. And then uh, for film and video, you have to have... 150 pixels per square inch resolution. You cannot go be below this. It has to be above 150. Same for printing, it has to be above 300 pixels. You cannot go below 300 pixels per square inch. So that is the resolution problems we have in Photoshop. But here, we don't have any resolution problem because whatever illustration or any artwork you create, even if it is small or big size and you're going to scale it big or you're going to scale it very small the image will not be damaged it will be sharp as sharp as what you have created okay so this is a greatest advantage in illustrator uh, that everybody makes designs the logo create their art and make the font type style font they use all these things in Illustrator. Only for photo editing and creating some effects, they are using Photoshop. So when we are creating a flyer or a brochure or a, a business card or a letterhead and all these type of things, we have to combine both Photoshop and Illustrator and create the final artwork for the social media. You may create a advertisement banners for the Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all this, Twitter. So you can use Photoshop and Illustrator together and create the artwork to get an amazing end result. All right. So in Illustrator, our first lesson is going to be, we have to convert a JPEG image into a vector image. Why I am saying this? Because when the logo is in a JPEG image, it will have a white background. Okay? So, removing the white background is a headache. 
then the JPEG image itself will have some resolution, image resolution. So you cannot scale it big or small. So if you have to scale it big to match your artwork, you will find it difficult. So if you convert it into a vector and then when you use the logo, it's going to be very easy for you so that the background will be transparent. It will not have a white background and it can be placed on any background in your artwork. And when you scale it, it's going to be sharp as sharp as it is. So it will not be pixelated or damaged. So I'm going to create, this is the open panel in uh, Illustrator. So in this, I'm going to create a new document. So open is for the existing already. See, I have, you can see the icon, I, icons. We, these are the illustrations and art logos and uh, social media posts I designed before, or previously for some other client. Now this one can be clicked on the icon, the thumbnail, image thumbnail and open the file. Or you have to say open, go into your hard disk, into your particular location and then you can open the file. Okay, I'm not going to open this. I'm going to open a new file. So I say create new. So when I say create new, okay. Here I uh, have multiple yes. disciplines. Yes, ask me. No, 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 sorry, go ahead. I, I, I stopped hearing you for a second, but ah, it's okay. fine now. Okay, okay. So now we have multiple disciplines. This is mobile, web, print, film and video, art and illustration like this, okay? So let us understand this. <coughs> Only for print, we have to use the color space here, which is CMYK color, okay? Because when you are creating an artwork for print, you will be doing this without white because when you're printing, it will be printed on a white surface or a white paper or a white uh, lithography or a white fabric. So, this CMYK color is followed for printing. Also, CMYK color is compatible with the printing inks which is manufactured because you will create something with some color shade in your artwork. But the printing ink may not give you the same result when it is mixed together. So uh, then you get a game at warning and the client will reject your work because this is not the color what he is seeing in the computer screen. So all this type of problems can be avoided. Okay. So we, we use the same YK color for print media only. Okay. Because this is printed on a white surface. Rest of this web, film and video, art illustration, mobile, everything, it will be viewed on a digital monitor. Okay, so we have to use RGB color. Okay, RGB color is compatible with all the digital monitors. Okay, so for only print media, we have to use CMYK color only. So this is an important feature you have to remember. That's all. Okay. So, in the advanced options, I keep RGB color, I choose. And raster effects, I'm going to keep 300 dpi, high 300 dpi. Because if I convert the vector to pixel, okay, it will convert into a high resolution pixel image. That's why I keep this 300 dpi, okay, pixels per inch. And, uh, all right. So now for the art work, I'm going to select A3 size. A3 size is a standard cut size of the paper. Okay, so 2A4 connected joined together is 1A3. Okay, so that's why you get 42 centimeters uh, height, length, and 29.7 centimeters width. So this is the thing you, you, will, you will get. But now I made it landscape. So it's showing 42 cm width and 29.7 centimeter as height. Okay, fine. I will open it, which is create. Now the artboard is created. We have the artboard here. Okay. Fine. 
So on your left, you see these are the tools, okay? And this is the main menu on the top. And on your right, you have the parametric transform type in uh, panels. So you can use this to edit whatever you're creating in your artboard, okay? So now I'm going to import the reference image and place it on the artboard. So file, place. Place means import. Then I go into lesson images and okay, give it a minute. I place this, okay. It is too small because of the resolution. I make it big. And I go to alignment, horizontal center, vertical center. Then I go to property and embed. So now the cross lines have gone and the picture information is added into the artboard itself, <coughs> okay? Then I have layers panel. So in this layer panel, now there is one ready-made layer. This is like a shelf, okay? Now in the shelf, bottom shelf, you have the image. I'm going to lock the bottom shelf layer. Then I'm going to pressing this plus icon in the bottom. It's a create new layer icon. So plus, press this button, you get a new layer created, okay? Now this is the second uh, uh, this thing, shelf in the layers panel, okay? So in this, I'm going to draw and create the same logo design, okay? So this I call Mastabia. So with this, uh, I'm going to show you when you see this, it looks complicated, difficult to create. But my method, if you see, it will be very easy and you will achieve the end result quickly and you will not spend too much time to create this. Okay. So first, uh, control plus. If you are using a Mac, it is command plus key. We'll zoom in. Press the space bar, your cursor turns into a hand and you can click your mouse and position your image. Control minus, zoom out. Now I want this part only. So I zoomed into this part. Then I take the selection tool. Sorry, this is a rectangle shape tool. Okay. So first I click on this, I take the rectangle shape tool. This is a selection tool, this is a direct selection tool. That I will show you now. So with the rectangle shape tool, I come here, place my cursor in the corner of this square, press and hold the shift key in my keyboard, and then click and drag a square. Okay. So now the square is white in color, because here we have the fill color as white. And this is the stroke color, which is none. So I'm going to click the small icon. Now the fill color is white, stroke color is black. So that you can see here, the square inside is the fill color which is white. The stroke outside the border of that uh, square is black. Uh, to make it uh, more prominent, I will show you like this. I will increase the stroke thickness to six. And I will change the color to red. So now you are able to see the fill color can be changed just by clicking into this and choose, so you can move here, choose whichever color you want and you can click dark shade, light shade, lighter shade like that. Uh, you say okay, it will be changed. And you can change the stroke color also by clicking on the stroke color and you can change it to purple like this okay but for this lesson i am going to keep it black and white the stroke is going to be black and the fill color is going to be could you please show me again where where did you click this white square if i double click I can change, move the slider 
to my the, okay okay so here i want to click the orange i go down i make it orange i move it so once i click it this color is the color which is going to appear apl apply inside this i say okay see you get that color but for this lesson i'm going to have none that is there is no color it is transparent for the fill and outside stroke is going to be black so this is black okay <coughs> now i go and take my select and move tool which is a black arrow select it so with this i can click on the object and move it or i can pl place my cursor in one corner of the square it turns into a double arrow i can click and rotate it or i can place my cursor on the point on a point and i can scale it like this okay i will undo this control z control z control z okay so all the three basic transformations what are the three basic transformations move is one scale two rotate three any object when you are creating editing you have to use this transformation rotate scale and move these three transformations you will be using very often now <coughs> holding shift key in the keyboard i place my cursor close to the corner of the square and click and drag slightly it turns once okay because it will turn in 45 degrees in apple okay so it's easy for you now you can move this to the center of the line yeah center of this line now i'm going to press shift key and hold place my cursor in the bottom corner of the square click and drag till it positions on the center of the line okay fine now what i do i go to the properties panel this is the properties panel i have to click it here i have the stroke color and stroke thickness this i'm going to make 18 18 point so it covers the full line with the same width okay next thing we have to duplicate this so the easy way of duplicating is you can select it go here and you can do copy paste okay or we can do a easy method i will show you the easy method easy method is you have to place your cursor on the line press uh, press and hold alt key so when you press and hold alt key okay the cursor turns into a double arrow by holding alt key you can also should press the shift and then press the right arrow there are four arrows in your keyboard which is up down left right so press once the right arrow so when i press the right arrow holding shift and alt key i get a duplicate square and it is placed 10 pixels away from the original okay now i am going to bring it back to its original position by pressing and holding the shift key and press the left arrow so again 10 pixels it is moved towards left and it is one over the other now i am going to press shift and hold key uh, and i am going to sorry 
I'm going to press Shift Alt and hold it in the keyboard. Shift and Option in Mac. Okay. So I'm going to, in Windows keyboard. I'm going to hold Shift and Alt key and click and drag this smaller. Now I place it exactly in the center of the smaller square and then go to my property window. Change the thickness to 18 point. Okay. So now I have created two squares which is exactly center of each other. <coughs> Fine. Press the space bar, move it little up. Take the rectangle shape tool place it in the center of the line here okay in this position and drag up to the end like this and leave your mouse key so that the creation of rectangle is terminated fine now i got that i have to add a center point ve vertex on for that I take my pen tool. So in pen tool there is a small triangle. If you click and hold the small triangle, okay, you get a list. In the list choose add anchor point tool. Select it. Now you get a pen tool with a plus mark. Place the pen tool on the line. So now you see there is a center point showing in the line with a pink line. That is the smart guide. That positions the center exactly for you. It's easy now. Click. Now I have added a vertex. So when, you click, when you click on it, you, uh, automatically it's at the center. Yes, because I get the center point. Do you, can you see the pink line? Yes, I do. Uh, it's mentioned. Smart in the so that indicates this is the center. You click here, a uh, vertex will be positioned there. Okay. Now, okay. to edit this and move only this vertex, I have to take my direct selection tool, which is a white arrow. So, I take the direct selection tool and click on the center vertex. Now, all the other four vertex are not selected because you can see it's white. Only the selected vertex is red. So, now I'm going to click and drag it up straight till it snaps to the corner vertex of the small square see now you can see it is it snapped it snapped and fixed to the corner vertex of the small square you can release your mouse so what happened is control minus i zoom out what happened is now i have created three shapes okay and exactly matched it to one unit of this design now the fill color is none stroke color is black for all the three I take my selection tool. See, if I click this, this is separate object. This is separate object. This is separate object. <coughs> now we have to combine all these three together and make it a single object. For that, I'm going to convert this to a shape because now this is only a line. Okay, So I'm going to convert the object into fill and stroke. So I'm going to press shift and hold shift key i am going to press and hold in my keyboard select the second one select the third one now all the three objects are selected i go to object expand when i say expand it will ask shall i convert this to fill and stroke so i say i agree okay now it has converted into the shapes okay so there is no line now only inside these two lines you have the black color filled even now this is single object this is single object this is single object now i'm going to hold shift key in the keyboard click this and click so now all the three are selected to make this a single object we have to remove the in between overlapping lines and connect the shapes for that the easiest way is you have to go for pathfinder this is pathfinder or in your properties property panel you have pathfinder okay so click the we're going to group them yeah click the first icon which is unite it will combine all the 
shapes into one shape. See now you see the three small uh, overlapping line squares on the shape. When I press yeah. the, when I press the unite button in the part finder first button. I don't see the button. No, here. Wait. I don't see your the mouse moving the cursor. No, here you don't see the screen. Or this is yeah, path. I do. I see path. Yeah, pathfinder, but inside pathfinder. I don't see what. Yeah, what did you click on? This is the first button. Shape modes. First button is okay. Unit. Okay. Ah, oh, you're right. Okay, okay. Okay, you click that. Okay. So now all the in between lines are removed. Okay, got it. So now we are seeing in color preview. I will show you in wireframe preview. To see the wireframe preview, you have to press Control Y or Command Y. So now all the colors are hidden. You are seeing only the outline shape. So there is no uh, in between overlapping lines. You have only the single shape. Can you sh can you show me where did you click again just now? Control Y. Full review. Control Y. Yeah. Okay. Or command. Okay. Uh, control or Command Y. You are using Mac or Windows. No, no, Windows. Yeah. Ah, okay. Windows, Control-Y. Okay, thank so you. I, when I do Control-Y, I see the wireframe. Again, I press Control-Y. I see the full color preview. Okay. Now, the fun starts. Okay. Control-0, full screen preview. Okay. Now, I'm going to select this single object. Just click once. It is selected. Okay. Then I go to Object, Transform, Reflect. So in Reflect, I'm going to say Reflect it horizontal. And if I say OK, it will make the existing one upside down. I don't want. I want the original plus I need the additional one upside down. So I'm going to press Copy. So I have the original and it created a copy which is upside down because I said this uh, vertical dressing. Now I'm going to press shift and down arrow to bring it and position. Yeah. Okay. Now hold shift and select. Now the two elements are selected. Objects are selected. Here in Illustrator we have rotate scale. Sorry, rotate. Uh, yeah, scale and move tool. So here I take the rotate icon, the tool click on this and rotate it and place it on the next item and see it is showing minus 36.15 degree can you see small next to my cursor it is showing minus 36.15 degree yeah yeah yeah, right, right. Ah, okay. yeah so that one i have calculated now i'm going to do undo control z then i double click my icon Double click my rotation icon. So in the zero degree, I'm going to put minus 36. Minus 36. Then here, I'm not going to press OK. I'm going to press Copy. So I have the existing one. I also created a copy which is 36 degrees rotated from the original position. Now this action is recorded inside Illustrator. So, to repeat the same action, I'm going to press Control D. D for Denmark. Control D. Once, twice. I have a question. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. That's okay. Good. Uh, how do I see the ruler, like the grid, to, to follow what I'm doing? Uh, see, control, to make sure I'm still at this point. Control center. R is going to give you the ruler. So okay, like and it, you can see you are in which uh, units. And I, how also can I have like this, uh, you know, lines that guide you, not just the ruler, but also the the, the, line. the lines and that tell you that you are, you are at the center, and you know you have the same space between the top and you know the ah, bottom. Yes. And I I will I will tell you that because your okay, mark guide thank will you. guide you. That is one thing. All right. If you want to select some center kind of one, okay, you can always uh, the vertex it will show in the center, or you can 
drag a guide okay and place it and match this you can snap to the guide and make it center uh, can you show me again how did you do the guide please you place your see first control r first you press control because in the screen now you don't see the ruler so press control r now you see the ruler on top and on your left yeah. side so if yeah, you ruler is clear, but I want the guides. For guides, Line. place your yeah. cursor on the ruler. Click and drag. Okay, you get a guide. And you, when you release your mouse, the guide will show. So okay. place my guide on top ruler. I bring down. Can you see the black dotted line? I bring down and I place it on the center. I release now I see the guide so these are the guides so if you want to hide the guides you can always right click and say hide guides lock guides release guides all this okay or I want to remove it select it delete select it delete okay fine now I made this geometrically perfect and now I have this so I'm going to select all by dragging a box or I press control A to select all. Now I have selected all. To combine this and make it into one shape, I'm going to press open my pathfinder. In pathfinder, I have unite. This is the first button. Click. Now it has all combined and it, it has become a single shape. I can show you control Y. You see the wireframe. It shows it's all connected to each other and it has become a single shape. Beautiful. Control Y. We have to color it. So our next task is we have to color it as a shape. So I go back to my layer panel. So in layer panel, I have the artwork I created in black. Okay, I'm hiding it hiding this layer so that I can hide my creation and I have in layer one the image reference image I placed okay now I'm going to release the lock because I'm going to make color samples from this uh, image for that I go here on my right hand side tools I open swatches okay if you don't find any uh, icon in the right hand side tools, you go to window. Here you go to window and you can open. Now I want swatches. So I can open swatches. So the swatches is opened here. Now I take my color picker, which is an eyedropper tool. Okay from my left hand side tool panel and click on the yellow color. This is the first color I sample. Now cl click and drag this to the empty space and it gets saved here. The next color is magenta and yellow mix. Drag this down. It's saved here. Now magenta. Drag it it's saved here as a third color. Then uh, magenta and purple. Then purple, perfect purple. Next, purple and blue. Next, blue and turquoise mix. Next, turquoise. This is a pure turquoise blue. Copper sulfate is a chemical. That copper sulfate blue is this shade. Now, I'm going to press shift and click this first yellow. So, all the sampled colors are selected. Now I'm going to press on the folder new color group 
I create and call this gradient. Uh, gradient. Okay. Okay. So it is saved in a separate group here. Okay. Now I close my swatches. I go to my layers. I lock this. Select the layer to unlock it. Reveal it. Okay. Now I take my selected move tool, click on the design and the object is selected. Then here the fill color is on top and uh, black color is filled in the fill color. You can make it none or you can make it gradient. So I make it gradient. So black and white gradient is filled in this. Okay. Now my design also is filled with black and white gradient. So on, on your right hand side tools, you have a gradient panel. So click on the gradient panel and it opens. Okay. Here I'm going to say edit gradient and in edit gradient, I'm going to click on the first slider, the white slider. Double click. I get another window opening and I convert this to swatches. So in the swatches, this is, these are the colors we saved, sampled. So I'm going to click on this. Now the yellow color applies to the slider. Click on the slider again. And next, you place your cursor close to the bar. It turns into an arrow with a plus. The cursor turns into an arrow, white arrow with a plus mark. That means if you click close to the bar, it will create a new slider. So double click and select the second color. Like this, keep adding. Third color. Fourth color. Fifth color. Now the last black one, click and make it purple. Okay. Now you can move this. And place your cursor near to the bar and rotate it. And you can move this little inside. Hold the last point and move it inside. So that the three end of this thing gets the color. Now you have to move it little, little and position the colors nicely. That's all. Make it equal space between each. That's all. I'm going to take my select and move tool, deselect it. I go to layers, I hide the reference image layer. Now I am into layer 2. I have created the JPEG image logo in vector because this is transparent. If I show outside, see the background you are able to see. This is transparent. Plus, I am going to zoom in and show you. How much ever I scale it, it's, it is sharp. Control zero. Now I will scale the JPEG image and show you will see the difference. So I'm going to lock the layer two, hide the layer two, reveal the layer one, unlock layer one, and take the zoom tool and I zoom and show. Since the JPEG image is made of pixels, you see the edges are jagged and the pixels are showing, okay? So we cannot use this. Our image should be sharp and good. So I'm going to lock it, hide it, reveal this. 
see it's very sharp even it is scaled more than 1075 percentage i can even scale it more it will not damage because this is created using vectors control zero you are in full screen previews and this can be duplicated duplicated how press alt key click and drag you get a duplicate and holding shift dragging one corner you can scale it proportionately you can make it small you can scale it big you can scale it small nothing will happen to the image it will be same sharp i can zoom and show the small one it is not damaged even if you zoom it big okay so this is our first lesson this is called converting jpeg image into vector 